My name is Lenny Jason. I'm, I am a professor of psychology at DePaul University in Chicago. I'm also the director of the Center for Community Research. I've been at DePaul University for the past 39 years. I initially got involved in ME research in the early 1990s. At that time, people were talking about this disease as the yuppie flu. What I found was that the CDC had done some prevalence research called the Four City Study, and they had estimated that fewer than 20,000 people had this illness. I was very skeptical of that research, and as a research psychologist, when I looked at their methodology, it was significantly flawed. For example, they had people refer folks into their study um, who had been, in a sense, identified by doctors as having ME. And yet, as we know, Lots of physicians don't even think this illness exists. So how could they refer people into their catchment prevalence study? So basically, looking at that research, realizing the CDC at that time was getting several thousand phone calls every month about severe fatigue and possibly ME, I was skeptical and I decided that I would try to work with some colleagues working on a prevalence epidemiology study of adults. After looking at the research literature, we found that basically there were better ways of estimating prevalence than through physician ascertainment methods. So what we did was we wrote an NIH grant, myself, Judy Richmond, and several other colleagues. And we were able to get funding to actually sample um, 26,000 people um, and tried to find out in that large sample, a community-based sample, how many people might have ME. And what we found was that the rates were much higher than what the CDC had estimated. So by the mid to late 1990s, we were able to make projections that approximately a million people had this illness. So that was one of the first large studies that our group did, but it took us 10 years to work on that basic epidemiology, from writing grants to getting it funded, to doing the research, to publishing it. So it is a long time commitment to, to do this type of research. I think one of the important things that we learned was that not only did more than a million people have this illness rather than 20,000, which was estimated, so it wasn't really a rare disorder, but in fact, the uppy flu was really a myth. The people we found that had this illness did not tend to be yuppies. In, in fact, we found people who had lower incomes um, had more likely to have this illness. So folks who were minorities, people of color, were more likely to have this illness. So that was an important finding, both the prevalence as well as the numbers. And that led us ultimately to make statements about this illness that really we needed to have more public resources devoted to it, in part because it wasn't a rare disorder just affecting a bunch of middle-class individuals who were possibly malingering or doing something else. This was a serious illness affecting a lot of people, many of them who didn't have resources and had other disadvantages besides the illness. Well, the, in terms of our current work that we're doing, um, certainly we thought that epidemiology was um, important to find out the prevalence rates for adults. Um, we're now, in a sense, trying to do some community-based prevalence studies with um, young people, um, pediatric ME, and that's going to be the work we're going to be doing for the next five years. Um, we're also going to be doing research on individuals who have mono, college students, and testing them when they're healthy, seeing what happens when they develop mono, and trying to follow them as to which ones recover and which ones don't. So I'll be doing work with Ben Katz at Children's Hospital in Chicago um, on those two very large projects over the next five years. The current research that we're doing is really wanting to kind of look at all the different parameters in terms of what are risk factors for those who end up getting ill versus those who don't and particularly looking at them before they get ill, 
That's a very important factor. Um, we have some research that we're just publishing that, for example, looked at um, mono in youth. And we basically have found that there was no psychological factors that were predictors um, as to which ones would get um, more severe illness and ME in the future. What we found was the actually the severity of the illness that they got was really the only thing that was a significant predictor. Um, so that's an important factor suggesting that there might be more biological factors that involve both the initiation of this illness as well as its maintenance. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube of tweet naar het MECVS Vereniging of mail naar wvp.me-cvsvereniging.nl. Uw vragen worden zoveel mogelijk behandeld in de chatsessies.